So a few years ago, actually, I was talking to some of my colleagues about the importance of autonomous driving vehicles for deep space exploration, especially Martian project, for example. So we realized, actually, that uh, the how much the important the technology, because they need to be the signals from Earth go to space and to go to Mars, depending on the orbit, it could take up to 20 minutes each way. So finding actually advanced algorithms, advanced systems that can enable these vehicles to be autonomous, it will go a long way in making these advanced missions successful. At the same time, I was walking a few days after that, and then I came across one of these advanced vehicles that were driving by, one of these autonomous vehicles, with a bunch of machines and with a bunch of equipment attached to them. And then I realized that there is a vast amount of energy, a synergy between space applications and applications on Earth. So what is driverless cars? So driverless cars is a combination of very advanced sensors and very advanced algorithms. And you need to go through a vast amount of data in a very short amount of time, and a fraction of the seconds being able to make a decision. So the challenge is basically we're doing here is speed versus accuracy. So we have, for example, these cars have LIDARs to be able to, with using uh, advanced uh, laser systems to construct a 3D environment around the cars. You have radar systems to, to calculate, calculate the speed and uh, approximate the vehicles. Uh, you can actually have uh, advanced cameras, have definition cameras to be able to determine the signs and the, and the traffic lights and being able to enable the environment. And all that stuff has to be done in a very fraction of a second. So imagine one of these vehicles is driving by and suddenly a newspaper is passing in front of the car. As a driver, as a human, you actually can, can keep going through it because you know it's not a problem. But as a driverless car, that makes uh, the big decision within a fraction of a second to determine is this safe to keep driving or do you need to stop? So when it comes to these uh, technologies, they have tremendous implications on ver every second factor of our life. So many aspects of our life get impacted by these single technologies. So when you look at productivity, for example, so there is research by Harvard University that indicates that within people's average lifetime, it's about 40,000 hours get spent behind the wheel. Can you imagine that? 40,000 hours of lost productivity that could be used somewhere else. How much impact is that going to have on the workplace, on the economy, and creating value? That is a big, big number, actually. At the same time, is, uh, the, 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 the question about uh, the driverless cars, if the final goal will be how to actually get zero accident and have 100% you know, safe cars. So uh, because of that, it's going to be, uh, right now we have 5 million accidents, uh, have five, actually 5 million people that get injured every year. And not only these people get injured, some people get killed because of unfortunate accidents, but also there's a huge impact on the productivity as well and reduces big impacts on the economic values of different countries. So the same thing with the traffic. So the cool thing about these traf driverless cars is, uh, for in, uh, on, the, uh, on the United States, for example, we have 250 million cars uh, on average. And each household has between two to three cars per household. So when you have emergence of these cars that can drive by themselves, immediately you can actually drop it down to one car. One car will be able to take uh, functions or every single transportation needs for the members of the household and there's no need to have three cars or even four cars per household. So immediately, the amount of cars will be produced, the amount of cars will be manufactured and will be acquired per, per, per house will be substantially diminished by a fraction. At the same time, when you're going through traffic, uh, when you go through freeways, sometimes in big cities like Los Angeles, um, Houston, for example, New York, there is a lot of amount of cars in, in the freeway, and they tend to be always, at the traffic um, uh, times, uh, a lot of congestion. So when these cars start communicating with each other, they start actually uh, predicting what's going to happen way, way ahead of them. Then actually you can go faster and get kids closer to each other. So that entails basically going a faster destination from one place to another. Collectively with the less amount of cars will be res resulting in substantially less traffic to be there. But at the same time, if you have a fraction of the number of cars in the, in the system, in the environment, in the, in the streets, what is that going to be? It's going to be a huge reduction in the environment and the pollution. Look at big cities, for example, Mexico City, look at Tokyo, look at, um, at uh, Los Angeles, look at Beijing. There's a huge amount of pollution that comes from all these cars. So the emergence technology of the driverless cars and actually being able to reduce these cars in the streets by, by a fraction, I think that will be having a substantial amount of the reduction on the, on the environment. So there is a lot of aspects we need to start discussing here as well. Uh, psychology. Uh, for, for example, we have been used all our lives to be able to, do, to drive our own cars, you know, and we have complete control. So imagine asking somebody that's been doing this for the rest of their life and go into a car driving at a very high speed in the freeway and you have absolutely no control. 
I think initially people are going to have some psychological issues dealing with these concepts, right? Uh, the new generations will eventually be adapting, will be raising and growing with these technologies, but the older generations, I think, might be a completely an issue uh, for them until they adapt to it. The same thing with the, with the older population. Uh, unfortunately, when you reach certain age, uh, you no longer is, are allowed to keep driving your car. So that uh, actually puts a big psychological factor or an impediment on older population because now you have to depend on somebody else to, to for your transportation needs. Something you've been doing for, the her for your whole life, going from one place, having complete independence, now you're going to have to rely on other people. With the emergence of driverless technologies, actually, these people will be able to go from one place to another and be dependent on themselves completely. Ethics is a very, very big complex problem, actually. We sat down on several boards, and every time we end up actually in conflict because it's a very, very uh, sensitive and very, very difficult topic to deal with. So how do you determine, for example, if a car is driving by, who is going to be the priority? Is the priority for the safety of the, for the person in the car? Is the priority for the person outside? If, for, for example, there was an inevitable accident where you had to hit a bus of younger kids or a, or a bus of, of older adults, which one gets a priority? So these things are not being made by themselves. You know, uh, the programmers, we have to put the boundary conditions into the system, and that is a very, very complex task. And, and by the way, these things have to be done at international level, because it's now not country by country. These are regulations that will be adapted internationally and agreed on, and these will be the basic boundary, boundary conditions that uh, will be people uh, working by. But the same thing, you know, uh, the emergence of driverless cars is going to have so many new opportunities. So right now, if we're talking about just mapping the streets, if you look at Google Maps, it only shows you a line, how to get from one destination to another. But it doesn't tell you how many lanes is in this street, how wide are the lane, how high is the pavement. So there is a lot of actually companies that need to start mapping these routes advanced in advanced technologies to be able to put it in the system to be able to do a better job. Now, if you spend a lot of time in your car, we need to start looking for also about what entertainment systems can be adapted into this car. What is going to be, if it's going to be an office, what advanced you know, communication system to enable mobile office to be in place? What, that, what kind of food, you know, for example, if you spend, again, a long time in the, in the vehicles, we need to establish companies and businesses that can cater, actually, and provide some nutrition and drinks uh, and uh, so on and so on. So there is a lot of opportunities for new businesses to be able to cater for, uh, for this whole ecosystem to be successful. This is a company in California, for example. <coughs> this, it's a mobile supermarket. It can go from one place to another for cities, for small towns and small villages where they don't have access to, to good produce and, and big um, um, uh, food. So what you do is you call this vehicle, you come to you, you pick up your, your whatever you need and gets charged automatically to your account. So emergence of these, uh, these new startups are starting to become mainstream and we're starting to see more and more every day. Another one that's kind of interesting is uh, being developed by Domino's Pizza. So instead of actually having to bake the pizza in the store, uh, you have this machine here where actually the pizza is being baked as it's getting to your destination. So by the time you get to your destination, you have fresh baked pizza, and you pick it up, and it's done deal. And you can even tip the machine. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it, it tells you about incredible amount of ecosystems that will be enabled across all these kind of uh, technologies. But what about the long-term safety? You know, we talked about having all these LiDAR systems, lasers, high-energy beams. But when you have millions of cars driving in the streets every single day, so what are the long-term implications on humans? Uh, that is something I believe has to be investigated, because the key is not inventing technologies for helping and enabling people to have better lives, but at the same time, enable, you know, coming up with potential issues that can ha impact people's life moving forward. There is a big issue, actually, in an investigation that people that stopped driving after a certain age, they were having huge reduction in the cognitive ability. When you drive a car, you, you have, you're thinking about so many things, about what's behind you, what's in front of you, what's on the side, do you have to speed, do you have to stop. It's a lot of cognitive exercise. So when you stop driving vehicles and for a long amount of time, the research indicates that substantial cognitive uh, decline will actually be taking place. So we need, as, as a community, as a technical community, start thinking about what are the replacements? What do we need to replace these things with, with for so actually we can keep the cognitive ability of different people in place, both young and older population. Also, you know, with the keep as we keep increasing the amount of population on, on different planets and different planets and different earth and different countries, uh, we're gonna actually start moving from two-dimensional to three-dimensional travel. 
And that by itself is going to create a whole new amount of technologies and challenges that's going to come with it. But that's going to be actually the future of transportation, moving from two-dimensional system to three-dimensional system for transportation that will be enabling us to get from one destination to another in much faster time. But what about uh, car manufacturers? So we talked about having uh, much less need for people to use cars. So if a company is producing millions of cars every year, so what is the long-term impact on them? I think strategically, these cars, the executives and the decision makers have to start meeting and start looking at the impact. And maybe you can, they can start tweaking the, the infrastructure, the manufacturing capabilities to maybe start producing advanced robots of the future, which are becoming much more uh, mainstream. But uh, eventually, it's going to have big impact on the manufacturing industry as well. So that's something that needs to be done and strategically discussed as well. But what about car insurances? You know, if you have a car, for example, that never gets in an accident, a car is never going to get stolen, so what, why do you need to insure it? So what I see is going to happen in the near future is going to be a hybrid approach, because people will have the option to drive the car, and then they can actually switch to driverless mode at certain times. So how do you develop hybrid, hybrid um, insurance models that actually be able to cater for these new markets? So all these kind of things will start emerging in the near future. Uh, the car insurance actually is a big revenue for all insurance companies, and that is definitely something that they need to start looking at, because it will have a big impact on every single one of them. What about the hotel industry? If I'm driving, for example, from San Francisco to Los Angeles for a meeting, it takes me maybe five or six hours, I, I'm going to have definitely after the meeting stay there because it's going to be a long trip to go back and forth. But if you have driverless cars that can take care of everything, then I can finish my meeting, get in my car, drive, driving back by itself. I can watch a movie, you know, I can even sleep, I can, I can eat, and it gets you from de destination to destination without any problems. So how much impact that's going to have on the hotel industry? As well, that's going to have to be discussed. And you know, there's many more, more and more. For example, parking garages. Um, there is a lot of uh, industries right now that exist that they leverage on the a vast amount of cars uh, that will be actually start diminishing because of the emergence and advancements of uh, driverless cars technology. But all the stuff that we're talking about is going to be very difficult to put together without a very, very robust cybersecurity in place. So these cars typically they communicate with each other. They communicate with their manufacturers to be able to get the latest updates. So when you have constant communication with foreign cars, eventually, essentially, you're transferring data into the car. So how malicious this, this code could be? How easy it is to hack these cars, for example? If somebody, you're in your car driving autonomously from one place to another, is it possible for somebody to hack the car? If somebody, for example, can get access to a car, can he maliciously cause an accident and cause injury to the person driving the car? So all these things are very essential, and I think it's going to be the basic foundation that's going to be put everything together to be able to have these technologies and autonomous driving vehicles successful. So every day, I see amazing, incredible technologies in the space field, and I see the same thing on Earth applications. So imagine if we put actually our collective intellect together to be able to solve some of the world's most challenging problems. I think the limitations will be amazing. Thank you very much. Thank you.